What's up, guys? Uh, it's been a little while since you've seen me, so I'm looking forward to diving into Tuesday Truth number three in our Jesus in Real Life series. So I want to take you back to 2012. My wife and I had the opportunity to go and visit her family in England, and I remember us uh, walking through the streets of London doing some sightseeing and getting to Buckingham Palace. And we were standing outside those gates looking at those guards who are able to stand ridiculously still for weeks and weeks on end. And we were just kind of feeling this, this feeling of like awe, you know, staring at this, this palace, knowing that the queen herself was inside of that building. It was, it was a weird feeling. It, we felt so small. We, we felt so unimportant. We, we, we felt like we, we shouldn't be there. And, and I remember thinking to myself, I wonder what it's like to be inside that building. I wonder what it's like to be a servant around the queen, you know, thinking all the time, oh my word, like I'm in the presence of the queen and, and bending over backwards to make sure that you, you do everything possible to serve this royal person. And sometimes when we think of our kings and queens, we often think of them as, as these people who just know that they are just the most important person in the land. And we think of them sitting on this, this throne with servants all around them, you know, fanning them or offering them a platter of grapes and Doritos. Well, maybe not Doritos, but, but you get what I'm saying. But we, we get this picture that kings and queens are just these royal, important, high and mighty people. And they just sit on their thrones all day, just being served and treated with utmost respect. Now, Israel, for many, many, many years, had no king. But they knew that the Messiah was coming because the prophets prophesied that there would be a day when the king would come, when the Messiah would come. And they waited and they waited and they waited. And they believed that when that Messiah finally come, came, he would come in power. Israel had many enemies and they believed that this king would come with all the, the force of the armies of heaven and he would come violently destroying all of Israel's enemies and again making this people for himself who could serve him. They expected a strong, powerful warrior who would sit on the throne and day and night all of Israel would serve and worship this king. So when the Messiah came in a very unkingly fashion, they, they couldn't believe that he really was the Messiah. When, when Jesus came, he, he came in the exact opposite way that they expected. He didn't come violently. He didn't come with force. He didn't come to destroy all of Israel's enemies. He came humbly. He came lowly. He came where he didn't have lots of wealth. He didn't have a, a high position. He came to serve. He didn't come to sit on a throne and expect everyone around him to just do what he said and, and, and praise him. He, he came to give his life as a ransom. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. I didn't come. To be served, but to serve and to give my life as a ransom for many. This is just so countercultural. This is just ridiculous. The king of all kings comes to serve. Why? Because in God's eyes, that's what greatness is is it's humility it's dying to yourself it's serving now if this was the attitude of the king of kings you'd expect the the king's followers to have the same attitude to behave in a similar way i mean it's pretty clear all throughout scripture that followers of Jesus 
become his children, become God's children. We're adopted into a royal family. We become princesses and princes under the king. But in Matthew 20, it is clear that some of the princes in Jesus' family didn't quite get what it meant to be royal. They didn't quite get what it meant to be a servant of the king and, and, and how to, to uh, accomplish greatness. See, they thought that the way to do it was to try and push their way to the top. James and John Famously, in, in Matthew chapter 20, they think that the, the way to greatness is to make sure that they can get the seat right next to Jesus in heaven. One on his right and one on his left. And so they get their mom to go and have a conversation with Jesus. Asking Jesus if he can reserve the spot in heaven. See, sometimes I think, as followers of Jesus and of as, as children who've been adopted into the family of Jesus, we, we can be just like these disciples. We can think that greatness is about pushing our way to the top, using everybody and everything to serve our needs. Human beings are, are just self-centered by nature, and it doesn't take much to look around our world, even now, and just to realize how people just want their own agendas. They want themselves to be thought of and loved. But there's very little of dying to self and serving others. Ask yourself today. Is there a sense of entitlement? Is there an arrogance? Is there a, a self-centeredness in your heart? God calls us as Christians to act like Christ the King. If we're royal, if we're adopted into his family, if we're princesses and princes, we need to act in line with that status. We need to take our cue from how Jesus was. Listen to what Jesus said to his disciples from verse 25 in Matthew 20. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Because this is what's expected in the world from rulers and kings, to lord over and to exercise authority. Not so with you, Jesus continues. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So let me ask you today, how are you living your Christian life? Is there a self-centeredness? Is there an expectation that everyone around you will serve you? Think about the way that you relate to your parents, your siblings, your teachers, your peers, even God himself. Does everyone around you exist to make your life comfortable? To get you what you want and need? Or is there a growing concern to serve others? Is there a, a growing attitude of humility? Is there a desire in you to lay down your life for those around you, even if it costs you? Because Jesus says, that's what true greatness is. So I challenge you this week to think about your heart and to think about whether you are living for others to, to serve you or whether you are living your life to serve others. I challenge you to think about practical ways that you can die to yourself. Be like Jesus the King. Act in line with your status as a child of God and serve those around you. God bless you guys this week. Cheers.